Hey, how's it going? I don't talk too much about different religions very often because I don't feel like it's my place to because we can all do whatever religion we want to do. But I, I tend to want to stick with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so I believe I want to read a couple things and then I'll tell you why. Well, actually, I'll just tell you why first, because that's what brought me to this portion of the Bible. Um, on my way to work, I was going past the post office through town, and I haven't seen this for a long time, for probably like two years, probably, you know, since since things hit the fan. Um, I haven't seen the Jehovah's Witnesses standing at the post office. Except for today. I saw, I think there was four or five of them standing there with a poster. And they all had their mask. They all were wearing a mask. Okay. Um, one of them was black. One, one of them was wearing a black mask. Not that the person was black, but the mask was black. Um... I wasn't even looking. I don't even know if they were white or black people. I don't even know because I was so thrown away by the face covering. And right away, this passage in the Bible, this moment in time, came right directly to me. And so I got I got my book out and I wanted to read it because it's really it's really cool. It's in 2 Corinthians, and I don't know if all the Bibles are like this, but my Bible has, um, on 2 Corinthians chapter 3, at the top of the chapter, it says, Ministers of a New Covenant. I don't know if it's, I mean, all through here, it's got different titles for each paragraph, each, um, um, yeah, chapter. <laughs> Each chapter, it has a different title to it. Reaffirming your love, um, Paul's apostolic ministry, you know, different things like that, okay? But anyhow, I'm going to read this quickly because i got to get moving to work. Um, I'm actually in my truck right now, but uh, this chapter 3, Ministers of a New Covenant, in chapter, or verse 17 and 18, I want to read this. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled faces, or with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. So, we are being transformed by the Spirit of the Lord. And there is liberty, freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay, and when I saw those Jehovah's Witnesses standing at the post office with their faces covered, um... I was wondering if they feel liberty, liberated, or free. I wonder if they feel free. Because they did not look free. They look like rape victims. They look like hostages. Um, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It did not look very appealing to me to go up and talk to them. Because if their truth involves me covering my face, whatever their reason is, I'm not going to go there because I don't know exactly why all five of them had their faces covered, um, in attempting to represent God, Jehovah, they're representing their God with veiled faces, all right? So, we need to think about these things. We need to think about, really, 
how we view our outside, okay, our image, okay, because it says with unveiled faces, um, when I think of, when I read that being unveiled, I think of honesty, I think of truth, I think of freedom, I think of faith, and all those things I did not feel, I felt kind of dark, okay, being covered up, that makes me feel in darkness, okay, so whatever it is, whatever the reason, this covering of face, or unveiled face, which, you know, I believe that I am part of the we all with an unveiled face are being transformed by the Spirit of the Lord. And I just want to read this in uh, Mark 7 because it's it's kind of, you know, kind of drawn me to this too. Um, it's, uh, oh my goodness, it's, it is boiling hot in here. So just bear with me here. Um, yeah, it says... Uh, followers of tradition is the title of this chapter, Mark 7. It says, The Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered around him, which is Jesus, when they had come from Jerusalem. And they had seen that some of his disciples were eating their bread with impure hands, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders and whom they come from. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they cleanse themselves. And there are many other things which they have been given in order to observe. So they've been handed down these traditions to, to do these things. They've, been, they've received them to observe them such as the washing of cups and pitchers and copper pots. And the Pharisees and the scribes then asked him, they asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with impure hands? Now listen to what Jesus says. And he said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain they worship me, teaching doctrines, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. So it's plainly right there to me that, you know, there are some people that will choose tradition over God. Plain and simple. Um, we we got to be careful of what we are trying to present. It's not the outside. It's not the outside of us that matters. It's not what we look like. It's all finished. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you. Because in chapter 7, it says, yeah, this is important. Okay, on down, Jesus was telling them about them neglecting the commandment of God to hold to the tradition of man. And he's saying also to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandment of God in order just to keep your tradition. Okay, so going down, um, he says, after he called the crowd to him, Jesus, Jesus called the crowd to him, and he began saying to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand that there is nothing outside of the man which can defile him if it goes into him, but the things which proceed out of the man are what defile the man. interesting so what's in what's in inside of you or us that would cause us to cover our face that's one question 
What's inside of us that would cause us to worry about what the outside looks like? Is it just a matter of routine that we just, you know, we forget about what's on the inside because we're so busy covering up the outside? Um, I, that's something Jesus, I guess he called them hypocrites for doing that, doing such a thing like, um, ignoring that what's in a man's heart is what comes out of the man, okay? So if your heart is hardened, you're going to have hardness coming out of you. Okay, so, um, I guess that's, that's all I wanted to share, because it kind of really, it really bothered me to think that they're actually trying to draw people in, not that it has to do with any specific, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is, okay, I don't know what they were going to, uh, try to share like what was their first you know flyer that they were going to pass out or were they going to talk to people about covering their face and being being clean I don't know I mean that's not what that's not what this is is for it, I'm just talking about it because when I saw them I know I know some about that religion not a lot because I wasn't part of it but, uh, I do know some about it, and I've read about it, I've studied a little bit of it, because I, I had seen some people getting involved in it, and I was just curious. So I thought, how in the world would someone, I mean, I don't know how I could, I don't know how I would be able to convince someone that that is the the true and only one religion I don't know I don't know how I would do it I wouldn't do it because I don't believe that's liberating I don't believe that the spirit of the Lord was with them that's what I believe but that doesn't mean that the spirit of the Lord is not with them it just for me going from the scripture I want to live with an unveiled face and with my heart clean with my insides clean and then we will naturally, we'll demonstrate what's on the inside. We'll wash our hands. We'll keep our robes clean. We'll, you know, we'll watch how we behave in front of people. And we will, you know, do, we will do the good things that God has prepared us to do. If we first clean the inside, okay? And if your inside is dirty, and you can't unveil your face then the good news is it's always the good news when it comes to God the good news is he lives on the inside of you his spirit is holy and that is the only power that you need to clean the inside to clean your cup to make room for the new wine. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, that was my little rant today. And maybe, maybe it helped you with something. I don't know. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it made you mad. I'm not taking any specific religion and trying to put any of them down. I just say, I'm just saying that it drew me to the scripture to see what the scripture says about it. That's how I get through life. I look and see what God says about it. What does God, how does God feel about this? Jesus called them hypocrites. Have you ever called someone a hypocrite? I think we're all hypocrites. I think we're all hypocrites in some way, shape, or form. I really do. But that's what we need the Spirit of the Lord for, is to guide us into all truth. So we're not, um, so we're not distracted and deceived.
So you guys have a blessed day. Whatever you do, be safe this weekend, and we'll chat later. Bye-bye.